It's the Bible verse Ephesians 4.32. We're going to sing it two times. So listen up and sing along. John 4, 7, and 8, which says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. So sing along with us. Beloved, let us love.
malicious Israel's idolatry. This week, we're going to be learning how God's presence fills the tabernacle. We're going to be talking about what tabernacle is. We're going to be talking God's glory. We're going to be talking about how God's glory descended to Moses. And next time, we're going to be discussing, or somebody else most likely will be teaching how God ordains the sacrificial system where animals are being sacrificed unto the Lord. So before we begin today's lesson, let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for today. Thank you so much for your mercy and grace upon all of our lives. Thank you, Lord, that we can even have this video lesson and learn about you, learn how awesome you are, how glorious you are, how merciful you are, and how gracious you are. And how through Jesus Christ we are able to have a relationship with you. Thank you, Lord, for all these children right now that are watching this video. Thank you, Lord, that you love them so much that you're allowing them to have this time where they are learning about you, where they are learning about their sin, and when they are learning that Christ has paid for their sin so that they can be forgiven of their sins and have a relationship with you again. I pray for all of the hearts for every one of these children, God, that you would save them, that you would make them your children, that you would give them peace that comes only by having a personal relationship with God. Thank you, Lord, for this lesson. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, little kids, let's jump right into this lesson. So, as a summary, I'd like to kind of give you an overview of what we're going to be studying today. The main theme that I want you to remember, remember how I wrote on the whiteboard, the main theme, the main idea is that God dwells with his people and God's glory is dwelling with his people. God dwells among his people with great glory. The key lesson for today is going to be from Exodus chapter 34, verse 6 and 7. Let me read the lesson or the verses to you. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, which is to the Moses, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sin. But who will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. Exodus chapter 34, verse 6 and 7. The main truths that we want to cover today are that God dwells among his people. God's glory is shining. God's glory is calming. God's glory is holy. And God shows his glory to the humble people. Let me summarize to you everything I want you to remember when this lesson is over. After Israel's idolatry, remember last week or last time when they were they made a golden calf and they worshipped in the golden calf, saying, This is our God who delivered us from the land of Egypt. And God's wrath came upon them. Moses took the Ten Commandments in his hands, threw them down on the ground. He got angry with the people. So God said that people would still enter the land of Canaan after that event of idolatry. But he said that he would no longer go with them himself. The people were very sad. And Moses knew that without God's presence, Israel would not, would be no different than any other nation. So Moses prayed 
and God answered with kindness. He showed Moses his glory, and then he came with his glory into the tabernacle. God displayed his glory through his holiness, kindness, and bright splendor. So we want to focus today on the gospel. How can we focus today on the gospel? God reveals his glory to Moses as an act of grace. Grace, remember, it's unmerited favor. You can buy it. You can earn it. God grants it to you. And God continues to reveal his glory through Christ, his son, to those whose he has chosen by his will. As God came near to the humble Moses and to repentant Israel, so also he draws near to all those who repent and humble themselves, dependent on Christ alone. In Christ, God displays how great he is by his kindness and justice by saving sinners, and by providing a just sacrifice for sin. God the Father sent Jesus Christ, his Son, to die on the cross for my sin, for your sin. We need to believe God, put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, and fully trust Him. Thank him for it and love him with all of our hearts and souls. Okay, so where do we start? Let's tell you the story how the Lord kept his glory away from sinful people. You would say, Why did he keep his glory from sinful people? Well, remember, they just sinned, bowing down and worshiping a golden calf. So, his presence would not go up with his people because they just sinned. They have sinned. So, people mourn when Moses came down and says, what did you do? People mourned. And they took off their ornaments. Remember the jewelry that they had? See, this is jewelry. They took all of their jewelry as the sign of their mourning. Moses prayed to God. On the basis of his people and asked for God's favor, it reminded God of the promises and asked of God's glory. Moses prayed on the basis of God's favor, promises, and glory. Moses regularly met with God and God spoke very clearly to Moses. Moses asked for God's kindness. Moses asked for God's presence, and Moses asked to see God's glory. So remember that when people sin, Moses comes down from the mountain, he sees this, and he gets angry, he breaks the commandments that God gave him. And then he tells people, what did you do? You sinned against the Lord. And so people realize what they did. They mourn. And Moses pitches a tent outside of the camp. Far outside of the camp, showing that God would not stay close to the sinful people. What did Moses ask for? When Moses prays to God on behalf of the people, he says, Lord, spare these people, forgive these people their sin, and lead these people Israel. And Lord, come stay with people Israel, and show your glory to Moses and his people. What are the three reasons that Moses gave for God to do these things? Remember? Moses prayed for these three things because God has promised, because
because of God's grace and because of God's glory. So three things. God has promised that Israel was his people. God has chosen to show his favor to Moses. And God's glory would not be displayed if Israel went on without God. You cannot see God's glory if God is here and you are there. God has to be together with his people to see his glory. How did God describe his glory to Moses? What is glory? He described himself as a merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. But who by no means will clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers and on the children, and on the great children to the third and fourth generation. So what did Moses do when he saw glimpses of God's glory? Remember, he bowed down and he worshipped it. Every time you or I or any human upon this earth, when you experience God's glory, you worship the Lord bowing down to the ground, all the way to the ground. That's how awesome God's glory is. When Moses and the people built the tabernacle, outside of the, of the camp where Israel lived, Did they do it the way God said? Yes, they obeyed God. Exactly. Showing that Israel had repented. What did God do after the tabernacle was finished? God's glory came to the tabernacle. He came and lived among the people. So, let me demonstrate this to you. How would I do that? Well, let's see. This is how I will do that. We're going to have a few illustrations so you will understand what we have talked about. I'll have a riddle for you. You ready for the riddle? Okay. I'm a round. You can kick or throw me. And I am about the size of your head. What am I? What do you think of it? I am around. You can kick or throw me. And I am about the size of your head. What am I? That's right. It's a soccer ball. See? We understand a soccer ball by its description. In the same way. We understand God's glory by how God describes His glory. So what is God's glory? Remember? Slow to anger. Calm. Gracious. Forgiving sin. And justice of God. That's the glory of God. Now, remember, we're talking about how God dwells with his people, Israel, in the tent that was outside of the camp. When people sin, Moses pitched the tent far away. And let me kind of demonstrate to you what that looked like. So you would kind of This is a tent, right? So, right there. So, Moses pitched the tent outside of the camp. And so, Moses would go in inside the tent. He would speak to God. He would speak to God inside the tent. And when he would come out, Moses would come out 
with a veil on top of his head. Why did it say Moses had the veil? Veil. Because God spoke to him and his face was brightly shining. You see how brightly shining this is? It is so brightly shining. It's like, whoa. Moses talked to the Lord. And he would come out, out of the tent. His face would be brightly shining because he spoke to God. So people were afraid and said, oh, this man was with God. We know that this man was with God. In like way, when we spend time with the Lord, we are like those brand, brightly shining lights to the people around us. We are kind, we are gracious, we are meek. We are merciful. We forgive sin when people sin against us, just like the Lord forgives us when we sin against Him. That's how the description of the God of Lord is being manifested in our lives. So let me kind of give a summary of what we have talked about today. Remember, right? We talked about that the Lord kept His glory away from sinful people. Then Lord showed his glory to Moses in the tabernacle, where Moses would go to the tabernacle and talk with God. The Lord proclaimed his compassion, grace, patience, love, truth, and holiness, and justice to Moses. Moses bowed down and worshipped to the Lord. Moses prayed that God would forgive Israel's sin and make Israel his own people. The Lord made a covenant to protect Israel through worship from the idolatry of other nations. Moses' face shines because God's glory because he saw God's glory. So then, when the Lord forgave the people, Israel, that's when he descended into the tabernacle, no longer in the tent, in the tabernacle. Moses and people built the tabernacle just as God has commanded them. A cloud came over to the tabernacle. Remember the cloud over the tabernacle? At night, it was the fire pillar. In a day, it was the cloud. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. The Lord dwells with his people. After Moses' vision of God's glory, the Lord told him to begin building the tabernacle. Moses and the people obeyed perfectly, and the passage emphasizes this five times. When the tabernacle was finished, the cloud came over to the tabernacle, and God's glory filled the tabernacle to such extent that Moses could not even enter. God's glory was too much even for Moses to endure. Eventually, Moses would be allowed to enter and God's presence remained among the Israel for the rest of their wanderings, fulfilling his promises to dwell among them and to be their God. The glory that Moses saw that shined in his face was just a glimpse of the glory of God revealed through Jesus Christ. Even we do not see God's glory yet in its fullness, but one day we will. This hope is not for those who continue in unrepentance because God's glory destroys sinners. This hope is only for those who humbly depend upon the glorious mercy and grace of God available because in Jesus Christ. Children, trust in Jesus Christ, love Jesus Christ, marvel at his glory. Until next time, it was good being with you. Hey guys, we're going to sing a song called Seek Me First.